can you use open source large multimodal models in order to chat with your images? With Lava, you can. Hey everyone, my name is Vinalin, and in this video, we're going to have a look at Lava, large language and vision assistant. It is an open source model that is provided by researchers from Wisconsin Madison University, Microsoft Research, and Columbia University. This model is completely open source, and there is uh, also links to a demo that you can try online. Also, there is the newest version of the model, Lava 1.5, which we're going to have a look for right in a Google Lab notebook. So, what is this model and why it is so cool? Well, the model is actually using GPT-4 in order to generate its own training data, and it combines GPT-4 with images in order to essentially train this multimodal watch model. And then this is probably the first model that is performing very well on some images that you can try on your own. And the authors are pretty much describing the performance of the model right here. And they say that this model is performing very well on the benchmarks that I've tried it on. And then the model is open source, so uh, the model and the code is publicly available on GitHub, of course. So the dataset is also available and they have a very nice representation of the different types of uh, or the different categories of the dataset. And they are visualizing the dataset right here in each of their own subsets. So you can go through this. Uh, they're talking about complex reasoning tasks, then uh, giving descriptions to images, a conversation based on something on the image that is uh, provided. The source code for the Lava model is available on GitHub and it is uh, very much alive. The authors are publishing pretty much non-stop. So there are many improvements to this model and they have a very nice release info right here. So you can go through the latest changes. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this model in a Google Lab notebook. But the authors are providing this pip install and they uh, are also providing this very nice demo in which you can use in order to try out some images on your own. The latest improvement to the Lava model is Lava 1.5, which paper was released on October 5th of this year. And the title of the paper is Improved Baselines with Visual Instruction Tuning. The major changes to the original Lava model are this clip architecture with a vision transformer. And this is described right here with an NLP projection. And then the authors are also adding an additional data set with a simple response formatting prompts in order to train this model. So they are providing a checkpoint with 13 billion parameters model. And the full training of this model takes roughly a day on a single node with eight A100 GPUs. So I would say that this model is relatively small compared to what we've seen with the large language models. I have a Google Quap notebook that is using a T4 GPU. So this is the free tier on Google Quap. And in this notebook, I'm installing the latest versions of the Torch and the Transformers libraries. Also, we are going to load the Lava 1.5 model using a 4-bit quantization. So in order to use those, I'm going to also install the Accelerate and the Bits and Bytes libraries. Finally, I'm installing the Lava Torch dependencies since this is the pip install version of the Lava Torch. So after everything is installed, here are the imports. And most of those are for using the Lava model itself. And I'm also running some image utils as well as some text wrapping and then uh, loading and downloading the images. So the first thing that I'm doing in this uh, notebook is to disable the torch unit. So this is essentially a helper from the Lava library that I'm taking from the original scripts from within the Lava library itself. And then I'm going to start with this model. And this is essentially uh, the Lava. 30 billion parameters 1.5, but packed into shards of 3 gigabytes. So this will make it a bit easier on our RAM in order to load the model itself. Next, I'm downloading some images, uh, which you can download as well. So these are the images that we're going to use for our data set or our exploration of the Lama or the Lava model. Next, I'm going to use a helper from the Lava library, which is called What Pre-trained Model. And then I'm going to pass in the path to the model, which is from a human face, of course. 
And this model, let me show you, is actually provided by Kamenduru, I believe. So thank you for that. Uh, and this is essentially the model sharded into three gigabytes storage space. And for the model name, I'm passing in only the name of the model, which is Wava 1.513B and the dash G gigabytes. And the most important parameter here is the what in 4 bit. So this uh, essentially what this utility is doing is to create a configuration using the bits and bytes library in order to load the transformer or the model itself into 4 bits. So this is how you're going to download the model and uh, the additional, you can see that this is downloading the tokenizer or creating a tokenizer for us based on the downloads from the map of the tokenizer, then the model. We have an image processor and then we have a context length. I don't believe that we're going to use that, but uh, this is what the library is actually returning for you. So next, we are going to have a look at the what image helper function, which is essentially taken just from the Lava repository. And again, this uh, starts by loading an image file or a URL. And in our case, I um, have all the other images within the local Google Quad notebook. So I'm not going to use the requests library to get the images itself, but I'm going to just using the tip or a pill image. I'm going to open the image and convert it to an RGB format. I'm going to return that. So the first image that we're going to have a look at is this girl on a bike and she's sitting in front of a house and the bike is nicely parked right here and you can see that her right foot is on the ground. So the girl is wearing her protective suit, uh, her boots and her gloves, but she doesn't currently wear a helmet. So I'm going to start with this image and then I'm going to create a helper function that is going to be called process image. I'm going to pass in the pill image right here to the process images function from the Lava library. I'm going to pass in the image processor and then I'm going to create or get the converted tensor to the model device. So this will essentially get the image, process it, and you'll see that this is the output tensor that you're going to get. So actually the image size or the pixels of the image are going to be 336 by 336. So it's going to be a square that our model is going to take as an image. And then I'm going to create this conversation mode, which in our case is going to be using Lava V0. So this is the case. You can try also the Lava V1 if you get better results, but on the experiments that I've run, this is the better model or the better conversation mode. So in order to create a prompt for the Lava model, I'm going to take the conversational templates from the Lava Torch library. And I'm going to essentially get what the authors are doing within the cli.py file. I'm going to add or prevent a default image token before the prompt. And then I'm going to create these messages for the roles. So the roles are actually the user and the assistant. And then I'm going to return the prompt itself along with the conversation. So let me show you what this means in practice. You can see that this model actually has a default prompt or a system message. And then you have a human and put as a message or image. And then uh, I'm also going to pass in a text right here, describe the image. This is the prompt that I'm actually giving. And then we have an assistant response from the template itself. So in order to use this, I'm going to create a function called ask image. So in here, I'm going to process the image, create the prompt. Then I'm going to use the tokenizer image token in order to create uh, this prompt and use the tokenizer to run over it. So this is something that is specific to the Lava Torch library. Then I'm going to create a keyword stopping criteria. And this is essentially a special symbols that allow us to catch the stopping of the output of the model. So this is provided by the, let me see, I think that the keyword stopping criteria is provided again from the Lava library. So you can use that. And then uh, the next part is pretty much model generate very uh, similar to what you might have in pretty much any transformer. So this is taking the image and this is the image tensor that we're providing. We are also passing a very low temperature in order for these results to be pretty much replicable. 
and then the maximum new tokens, and then the stopping criteria, which is essentially taking for this stopping string from the conversation style that we have. And after the output is given by the model, I'm going to essentially decode the output using the tokenizer itself, and I'm going to return the response. So for this image, let me just remind you of the image itself. I'm asking the Wobble 1.5 model to describe the image, and I'm outputting the result into a width of 110 characters. Of course, you see that this takes roughly 15 uh, seconds in order to run through this query. And the model is performing a very good job. It is uh, featuring a woman sitting on a motorcycle parked on a brick driveway in front of a house. She's wearing a black leather outfit, leather jacket and leggings. The motorcycle is positioned prominently in the scene with the woman sitting comfortably on it. Okay, so I would say that this description is very nice. And then I'm asking the model, does the woman wear a helmet? Uh, please keep in mind that these conversations are not actually in a chat format, but they are given just as a new input. So if you want to create a chat with this type of model, you have to use the conversation uh, module a bit more in order to create the conversation itself. But here I'm just asking questions. Yes, and the model is wrong here. It says that the woman is wearing a helmet while sitting on the motorcycle. So you can see again that she is actually not wearing a helmet. So I've tried another prompt in order to have a look at the reasoning abilities of this model. And I said, take a look at the woman's head. What is the color of her skin? Does she wear a helmet? The woman's skin color is white and she's not wearing a helmet. So when I ask in such a way that is providing a bit more context, probably, so something like the chain of thought prompts that you might be familiar with, then the model is actually providing a correct answer. So keep in mind that this model is also prominent to uh, possible to give you a hallucination examples. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to take a look at uh, OCR and document understanding. I'm going to load essentially the first page or an image of the first page of the Bitcoin a bit a peer to peer electronic cash system paper. And you can see that we have the title, then a very lengthy abstract right here, and an introduction part on this image at least. And then I'm asking, what is the title of the paper? And it says that it is Bitcoin a peer-to-peer a -peer electronic cash system, uh, which is correct. And then I'm asking to extract the text from the abstract. And then it's essentially repeating the title of the paper, which is again wrong, but the title was correctly extracted. And then I'm asking to create a summary of the abstract of the paper in two sentences. And it is essentially taking this and going through the summary. So it is actually defining the summary or the abstract of the paper. And then it is uh, also trying to create a very nice summary using the abstract. So I would say that it did a much better job compared to the extraction of the abstract itself. Next, I'm going to give this paper a price chart. So in this case, I took this from CoinMarketCap, I believe, or something like that. And I just passed in this data and I asked, this is a chart of Bitcoin price. What is the current price according to the chart? And the current price, at least right here, it says uh, 29.8. And let's see what the model is giving us. It says that the current price of Bitcoin according to the chart is 23,000, which is incorrect. So yeah, this model got this wrong again. And then after the caption, so this is the capture that I'm passing in. Extract the text from the image. So this is what I'm asking. And it says that is 540, which is again uh, quite wrong, as you might see. The final test that it did is to what this mean. And uh, you can take a look at it. So this is the meme. And then I've asked the model, is this funny and why? Yes, the image is funny because it humorously represents the process of learning by showing a person's brain go through different stages of learning. So it got uh, this very well. The image features a series of four pictures of a brain, different stage of learning, such as university online courses, YouTube, and articles. Okay, so I would say that uh, it is getting this correct. 
probably there were a lot of images with this type of memes on the internet. So I would say that I would expect this type of memes to be represented quite well, explained quite well. And then I asked all order all warning resources sorted by usefulness in a list according to the image. The best must be at the top. So I would say that the image is reversely ordered, but uh, the model said that the online courses is number one, so this one, then YouTube, so this one, then university, university here, then articles, and then memes. So it did its own sorting that is uh, not very much aligned with the image. But I haven't tried to ask why uh, this is the sorting that is giving us. Maybe you can do that in your own. And let me know in the comments. So this was it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.